Hi, it's Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. I don't know what's coming, but I've got guests and I'm going to do some appraisals and teach you what you got, what it's really worth. Here's my first guest. Remember, I don't know what's coming. So, hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How are you? What's your first name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Dr. Lori. Oh, I've got your second one coming in here. Okay. Sorry. Hi, uh, hi. Uh, I'm Ashley. I'm from Canada. Hi, nice Canada. Hi. Hi, Ashley. Nice to see you. These are expert answers to your questions. Of course, we'll take super chats and super stickers too to answer your questions. Thanks for being with me. So Ashley's my first guest. And uh, again, all unscripted. What have you got? I've been paying attention to you and I've been trying to buy better. So okay. I are you buying me. better? I think so. I've got a okay. Miriam Haskell ring here. Okay. That I got. It is marked on the inside okay. here. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you can see it there, but it is marked. Okay, so you've got a Miriam Haskell ring. You recognize yep. that costume jewelry is a good thing for resellers. Have yep. you been reselling a long time? And tell me a little bit more about the ring. Can you show me the ring while we talk? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I'm actually just getting into reselling. Okay, why did so you there. choose costume jewelry? Well, from what you've been telling us, it's a good piece right now to buy into. So I gave it a shot. It was only $15 at an auction. So I thought, why okay. not? Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll test it. A <laughs> couple of things, couple of things about costume jewelry. First of all, that particular piece is an is indicative of her middle 1950s, 60s time period. So okay. you want to have the mature period, the period that are characteristic for that particular artist and their work. And that's what you have there. Nice okay. big, of course, pearl-like faux pieces. And they're all faux, but basically yeah. they're nice quality. And the better the quality, of course, the better the value. So for $15, you made an investment of $15. You paid about 10% of what it's worth. Okay. It's worth about 150 bucks. Now, here's the situation. You happy with that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's the situation when you're selling pieces. And I've been telling people about this. Thank you very much, Ashley. I've been Indeed. telling people about this because a couple of things about costume jewelry, just in general. If you can get these pieces for 10% and then sell them again, you're going to make about 90%. That's what a lot of antique dealers make. They make about 90% when they buy something. Oh, I had no idea that's what was going on. Well, yeah, they can actually make an awful lot on these pieces as long as you know what to look for. Now, to get, again, a Miriam Haskell or a Hattie Carnegie or other big name costume jewelry piece for that low, for that low price is great. Most of the time, people are starting to understand this. But if you're a reseller, the thing about costume jewelry that I think is great, easy to ship, easy to store, easy to maintain. So you don't have these issues that you have with some other types of pieces. But really glad that she got something for a little bit of money. Great, babe. Thank you very much for the super sticker. I appreciate it. You're supporting the channel. And when you support the channel, you support not only me, but my staff and our ability to make more videos for you. My staff do an awful lot of work to make sure that you folks are getting all the information. Information like um, being able to subscribe to our newsletter. My newsletter is very, very popular, and I ask you to subscribe. If you are having problems subscribing, I want you to check it out on your end because we have lots of people who are subscribing with no problem. And when folks get it, get, come to my staff and say, it's your problem, you did something wrong, I don't like it. <laughs> so please, I want you to check before you start to make accusations that something doesn't work on our end. The newsletter, and you can, you can subscribe to it, very simple. Just go to the to drlorev.com. You'll see, of course, the thumbs up free. Click on it. And of course, type in your email and we will send you the newsletter. So thank you very much for doing that. And thank you for re showing your respect to my staff the way you show it to me. Here's my next guest. Hi, Hi. I'm Dr. Lori. What's your name? Lynn. Hi, Lynn. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. How can I help you? Um, I went to Goodwill the other day and I found these. Okay. Um, oh, you did. And there's five of them. Okay. And I believe that the reason why I was attracted to them is because they do this. They glow. Okay. Right. So I don't think it's uranium. I think they're mag manganese. Mag manganese. Okay. Glass. Okay. There was four of them. This one was, these were peachy colored. And then the fifth one is a little lighter green for some reason. Okay. You can see it kind of. Ah, be see careful. the difference? Be careful. 
You're so against each other. Be careful. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> See, that this one's a little lighter for some reason. Okay. All the others were, this is like a peachy color. Yes. And this one was more green. Okay. But they all came together. They're slip shades. Slip oh, yeah. shades that go on a, well, I'm looking, I saw they were Art Deco, um, Art Deco slip shades from the 1930s. But if these are mag manganese, they stopped producing that glass in 1915. So okay, let's get all the information right from the correct source. Okay, so I get con I get concerned because folks are looking at stuff online and they're not always getting the right information. So I want right. you to have the correct information. Those particular pieces are indeed very nice. They're considered, of course, into the art the end of the Art Deco into the Art Modern time period. And I, it was very smart of you to buy them all, even though one of them was a different color. Okay. That was a very good move. How much did you pay? I paid $2.29 <laughs> for each one, a total of $12.35 with tax. They're worth about $25 to $35 each. So I good. would probably put them up at $35 each. Based on actual sales records where similar pieces have sold. Thank you, Lynn. Good for you. A Thank couple you. Of things, you're welcome. A couple of things about when, this reselling and the market. First of all, at times when the real estate market is doing well, you will see that things within the home to design within the home, lampshades, lamps, artwork, decorative pieces will do well as well. So remember, if you see a spike in the real estate market, most people who are moving into a new home, <coughs> pardon me, will also in fact, um, be looking for particular pieces that look good that will go in their home. So very nice. I'm glad she got them. It's always good to get them low um, in terms of a low price. <coughs> wow, sorry. <coughs> Excuse me, I have another guest. Maybe we won't cough through this one. <laughs> I'm Dr. Lori. This is Dar Ask Dr. Lori Live. It's nice to see you. What have you got? I'm giving expert answers to your questions. And of course, I'm very happy and I appreciate all of your super chats and super stickers to support the channel. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. What's your name? Hi, can we get some audio for you? Oh, we don't have audio for you. I'm sorry. We're going to keep moving along until she gets her technical difficulties worked out. So we want to make sure we get to as many of you as possible. So we're going to move along. I'm sorry, but we have to move along. Hopefully she'll be able to come back and maybe she'll have her audio um, situation sit, uh, fixed. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. <gasps> Hi, Dr. Hi, Dr. You... Lori. Hi, can it's you nice hear to me? see you. Hi, how are you? Hi. I am so Thank excited you. to finally get on with you. I'm, I'm so canned. excited to have you on. Nice Thank to see you. you. Thank you. Can I'm you... Jan from Rochester, New York. It's nice to see you. Jan, did you say Jan or Pam? I am Jan. Jan, would you please do me a favor, honey? Will you please turn your, your phone the other way? There you go. Perfect. Okay, great. Nice right. to see you. I'm glad you're excited. I'm excited too. I love to see all of you folks. We have a great community here at the Dr. Lori V channel. So what can I look at for you? Um, I want you to look at this painting for me. Okay. And I'm trying to figure, it's in the, let me get out of the way. Can you see it? Yeah, I can. Can you get closer to it? Yep. Mm -hmm. So the two horses, of course, the horses usually represent two different things. It could be good and evil, you know, the white and the black. Sometimes it's um, purity and lust. Oftentimes it's that in, um, in in the 18th and 19th century painting. Yeah, this looks more like good and evil to me. All right. Um, so how did you acquire it? So um, my mom was an antique dealer for 35 years and I inherited her house. Okay. She passed away and our family has owned the property for six generations. You know, so it's very, it's very interesting with, with this because I get called in for, by the families, by the children of many, many antique dealers and auctioneers. And yeah. I oftentimes have been told that, well, my mom or my dad always said, go to Dr. Lori because some yep. of the associates that I have are not the people that I want you to actually get the appraisals from. Right. I, I am so signing up for your priority service. <laughs> I, I'm just, 
like it's it's a it's a hoarder situation so i have to dig things out and i'm trying to get pictures of things but oh yeah you and i are going to become real close well that's (laughs) fine but a lot of a lot of it is that way because you know that business is such that you accumulate a lot of things to be able to move them out but it's very interesting that the industry says oh you know what we want to make sure that you get the expert they want to protect their kids correct that's true for everybody sure the priority service is very very popular as are my video calls yeah so Having said that, this particular piece is a nice piece. Is it signed? Yes. Okay. Let me. Did, were you able to make out the signature, Jan? The signature is. Uh, no. It, it's it's difficult. I wish I had okay. better. Okay. Well, let's better talk about what we here. do know since we're not sure of the signature. Let's talk about what we do know. First of all, we know that this piece does look like it is um, a mid to late eight. 1800s painting, probably the 1800s, 1850s, 1870s, maybe a little bit later into the 1880s. So that's the first thing we see. Notice the sky. The sky is all very dramatic and you're starting to see, of course, the clouds and such. You can see the turmoil in the whole piece, which is very typical of the Germans and the English in that time period. The frame is American and the frame is a little bit later than the 1880s, probably the turn of the century. How big is this painting? It's friggin' huge, Dr. Lori. <laughs> okay. I want to okay. say it's like, it looks like it's almost like two feet by four feet. Okay, well, that's not that big. But basically, big. well, yeah, it's probably big for the wall, right? Yeah. So basically yeah. what I'm looking at is a painting. I got to give you a range because we haven't done too much research on it. So, so I, I can, would say I low end for little... a typical 19th century sort of struggle of the animals kind of piece. You're looking at anywhere between $1,200 and about $2,500. I'd add another $250 to that value for the frame. Yeah. Oh, it's nice to meet you. Thank you for being excited to be on the program. Oh, I'm so excited. Thank you so much. For thank you so much. You do. Your knowledge is amazing. Well, thank you very much. I'm happy to share my knowledge and my expertise. And I appreciate those of you who, of course, are kind enough to recognize that. So thank you very much. Absolutely. I'm happy to do it. Thank you, Dr. Laurie. Sure, darling. Nice to see you. It's very hard when you have a lot of stuff. You know, when there's a lot of stuff, you have to go through it. I always say, you know, when it, when you're in a situation like that, think about choosing a number of pieces that you just can't live without that remind you of that person who's passed away. And then you want to go systematically by type through the rest of the stuff. You'll start to get an understanding of that. Bonnie, thank you very much. If I book a 30-minute session with you, how many items can I get appraised? I'm hoping to do a speed round of appraisals and get the most for my money. That's fine, Bonnie. In a 30-minute session, you can, in fact, do as many pieces as we can do together, you know, so I'm accurate within the 30 minutes. So as many as you can fit into the 30 minutes. I always say, be organized. Don't be unwrapping stuff at the beginning. Make sure everything's unwrapped and placed on a table in the 30-minute session. The 30-minute uh, video calls are very, very popular. I did many of them today. Actually, one of the video calls that I did today was, in fact, someone who took me shopping with them. And I went through and I was able to actually pick out a piece that was um, priced very low, $10, $15. And I said, we're not going to pass that one up as we went shopping. And um, that piece was worth $1,000 that was sitting there with a price tag of only $15. So again, it's well worth it for folks to take me shopping. She made a big killing on that one today because my eyes were on her shopping offerings. So that was great. That was great. A lot of fun. That was actually um, in the Caribbean. Uh, That woman was there shopping. Hi, Elizabeth. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. I appreciate it. You're not only helping yourself and helping us to make more videos that will be instructional and helpful. Thank you very much, Jeannies. I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> but you're also helping everybody else. Just started serious reselling, found Dr. Lori. What a fresh, fresh air. Well, Val, I'm glad that you are um, finding reselling and you're finding the channel. There's lots of information, as I said, on the newsletter as well as on the channel. And I always offer, use the binge link. You can binge all of the. Um, videos right here. You can use the binge link and learn a lot about, again, all different types of stuff as you do the reselling. And again, the video calls taking me shopping is a lot of fun. So (laughs) great. It's nice to have all of you as guests and it's fun to be with all of you. I appreciate you being here. Here's my next guest. Hi, Dr. Lori. Hi, how are you? Fine. How are you? Good. What's your first name and where are you? 
I'm Amy and I'm in Dallas, Texas. Hi, Amy. Hi. Dallas, Texas. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, Dr. Lori, I found this little pot, this little okay. uh, bowl at oh. a thrift store, Goodwill. Okay. And it's just a very simple shape. Yeah. And it's really beautiful. And I've been trying to find out, you know, where it's from and who made it. Been on some Facebook sites for pottery. And at the oh. bottom, it says, Porcelana Roja de Betger Meissen, 1769. Okay. And I don't know if this is like a red herring, but okay. it is on it. So that's okay. what I have. So let's, let's talk a little bit about this. So you're on these sites and some, and everybody's trying to be helpful, right? Okay. So they're trying to be helpful, but they don't know what this is. They don't know what this is. No. Okay. So what do you think it is? I think that even though I think this might be a red herring thing, I think it might've been something that a designer made, like a designer piece as a model or a, just a, a sample. But you I think it's know. a prototype? A prototype, yeah. You think it's a prototype. And what do you mean when you say it's a red herring? You think the mark is like a fake? Well, yeah, I think this little sticker could have come from something else maybe. Okay. I, at, I went out to the Meissen site and I did try to do some research on the internet and it wasn't, nothing like this looks, they don't have anything that looks like this. Okay, so it doesn't look like that. So what time period does that look like? Because, you know, I'm not a big advocate of, oh, all these marks, because I think it's kind of the easiest thing to do to match up a mark. I think yeah. that's like easy and baby stuff. That's like, you know, you're learning to read, but you're still doing the ABC books. I and mean, what's the point? So you have these things and everyone's saying, oh, it has to be the mark. It has to be the mark. Marks can be forged. Signatures can be forged. You know, so you're thinking, I don't think this mark looks right to me based on my research, right? Right. And there is a signature on it, but I haven't been able to, it's like, but you're, afraid, but you're afraid to go with your gut. See, this is the other thing that a lot of you don't do. You sort of rely like a crutch on these marks, these marks, these marks. I want you to look at the piece. So look at the piece and tell me what time period do you think the piece is from? I think it's from the 1960s. Why? The 1960s. Why? It sort of has that sort of mid-century feel to it. It has very um, like uh, abstract art, uh, asymmetrical art feel to it. So maybe 50s okay. or 60s. Okay. So you're saying it looks mid-century modern because of the curve. Yes. And the fact that the curve kind of stops, right? So it's yes. kind of like almost like a scoop of ice cream. It comes up and then it stops. So yes. there's a juxtaposition against it. Can you hold it up a little higher so everybody can see it? There you go. So there's kind of a change to it. And let's see in the bottom. You said it was, so it's it's high on one side and low on the other side. Not that bottom. I want you to, I don't want to see the underside. Basically, what I'm trying to get you guys to understand is it looks like there's a piece of it that's been cut out and cut away to make it more dramatic. I want you to look at forms. I want you to stop relying on only marks. And once you get this confidence, you're going to be dangerous. And that's why I'm trying to train all of you. I want you to succeed, and I don't want you to only be like, you know, the run-of-the-mill resellers who basically go, well, it's a mark, and that's all the best I can do. That particular piece is a piece that's made in Germany. It's imported, of course, into the United States in the late 1950s, early 1960s. It's worth about $40. How much did you pay? I paid about $2.99 for it. Good for you. And yeah. the thing, thank you very much. And the thing about these groups, the groups are fine. They're trying, you know, but again, you have to know your source. And a lot of these folks are standing up there as if they're experts with no background, little education and little experience. They just have enough gumption to say, I'm right. They're not always right. So you have to be aware of that. Some of them are right. I want you to be aware. Some of these groups are doing a great job and trying to learn all of this stuff. A lot of these groups are actually, of course, here following this channel. And a lot of you are sharing this channel with them. And it's been helpful to everybody. And that's what we do. So that's why I want to make sure that that's what's happening. <clears throat> Hi from Old Sturbridge Village, Jason. Well, that's a beautiful place. I've been there many, many, many times. And Old Sturbridge Village was sort of the typical New England field trip place where we always, uh, they always took the little kids. So it's nice to see you, Jason. Thank you for the super sticker as well. Thank you so much, Dr. Larry, for sharing your knowledge. You're welcome. My family loves you and the loop is a game changer. The loop is a game changer. Thank you for your, your very, very generous support. I appreciate that very much, Stephanie. I'm glad the family's together and they love it. The kids really do love it. It's a lot of fun. So um, Peter, such stupid, obvious information. So I'm stupid and I'm obvious. Why are you watching? <laughs> 
So that's my question to you, Peter. If you're going to be impolite, go elsewhere. There's lots of other people who you can call stupid and obvious. <laughs> so thanks very much. Hi, Lori. Thank you very much for your super sticker. I appreciate that, too. I take no prisoners. People will say, well, gosh, I can't believe she said that. I'm trying to do this for you. I'm doing it, of course, uh, at the lowest possible cost for all of you. Free for most. So, you know, basically when someone's going to be impolite, I don't think you want to hear it. And I certainly am not going to listen to that. I want you to learn it. I want you to get it. So if Peter has to be like that and act like that's probably not even his name, then again, I don't really want to just even entertain these people who are going to upset all of us. We're trying to learn some things so you understand what's what. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. How can I help you? Hi, Dr. Lori. Hi. Catsy. Hi, Catsy. Nice to see you. You too. Okay. Um, I'm a quilter and my, one of my Quilt Guild members, um, I don't know what it is about white people, but they love giving me their African-American art and I'll take it. Well, beautiful. That's wonderful. <laughs> my so, so someone gave this to you as a gift? Yes. Her name is Bijo Trimble and she actually is a, was affiliated uh, with the guy who did the... Star Trek, the guy who wrote this television sh show, Star Trek. Okay. Uh, she and her husband, yeah. John. She, so she, how did she, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. She gave me this. She also gave me an apron that has an African-American uh, person on it. Okay. Um, and so I don't know anything about this, but when so she- this looks like a, this looks like a, um, this looks like a mixed media piece, a piece that's basically made of found objects. For example, the pin cushion that is the hat. Thank you very much for the super sticker. The pin cushion that's the hat is very, very common and well known to the 1950s. So these, these pieces do look like sort of um, elements of sewing stuff out of the sewing box, basically, and then making it into a figure that does look like a figure that would be from the Afrikaners um, culture of the Caribbean. It does not look like a figure to me that would be from Africa, the continent. It looks more like uh, the figure of folks who would come through and have that French um, influence on the culture with, of course, the African influence on the culture that you usually see in places like Jamaica and other parts of the Caribbean. That's what it looks like to me. Okay. So time period for it probably dates to about the 1950s to the 1970s. Is it five? Is it eight inches? Is it 12 inches? 12 inches. 12 inches. I would say it's a nice mixed media piece. Somebody's going to like it. I'd probably put 40 bucks on it. Oh, cool. Well, it's, it's it, because Bijo gave it to me. Well, that's right. If it's a gift, a gift is, comes from the heart. So that's wonderful. Thank and you. And my heart to yours. Thanks so much. Nice to see you. I like found objects pieces and I like pieces like that. It's kind of a figurine, but it's more of a found object um, mixed media piece. It's nice. I like it. <clears throat> Hi, Karen. Thank you. Thank you for having me on with my horse paint. I can't remember anything you said because I was so excited. Well, watch it back, of course. And thank you very much for, of course, being part of uh, tonight's Ask Dr. Lori Live. Hi, Tommy. Thank you very much for binge watching. There's lots to watch. You can use the binge link. Thank you, Aiden. I appreciate your support, all of your support. It helps me to help you. And uh, of course, I appreciate your support. I'm, I'm glad you love the video chat, Rob, and it was nice to chat with you too. Uh, the video chats are very, very popular and it gives you a chance to answer those questions. Oh, you're welcome, you're welcome. I'm in the process of organizing your sales room. That's a big job, but I'm sure you can do it. We're doing a video call once more and a bit more organized. You know, it's easy, of course, try to be a little bit organized and have you know your ideas, what's what. People do the video calls all different ways. Today, I had um, a woman who did a video call with me. She had everything out on the table. She had put down what are called freezer paper on the table. And then she just wrote. She had all the pieces. She had a piece of paper. She just wrote next to the pieces. She made it easy for herself that way. All different ways you can do it. Post-it notes work best, too. So, hi, I saw a guest, but I was yapping. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How are you doing? How are you doing, Dr. Lori? How are you doing, baby? Can you turn your, your um, camera the other way? Because you're not, you got to go horizontal for me. Okay. I'm sorry, you're all set up. <laughs> so what's happening? What's your name? Where are My you? My name's Nate. Um, I bought this piece at the... Uh... What's your first name, hon? My name's Nate. Nate. Yeah, how you doing? And you bought this piece where? At the flea market, Dixieland. Flea okay. Market. 
<laughs> I'm not seeing the whole piece. There we go. Why? What? What drew you to it? Is it? Was um, it, the it, that drew it looked to me like it was Capo. I liked the. Is this a pooty or is it a cherub? Okay, so angels are like adolescents with the big wings. Those are angels, right? And yeah. then you have cherubs, which are usually like toddlers with the legs, and they have wings. Those are cherubs. And then a pooty is just a head with wings. Okay. okay. Three degrees, baby. I spent a lot of money to know that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, All right. so you think it looks like Capodimonte? And also uh, Majolica, possibly. And Majolica. So it looks like lead glaze ceramic, which is introduced by the Italians in the Renaissance. And what's on the bottom? Is there a mark on the bottom? There's no mark on the bottom. I think that piece is made in England. Okay. I think that piece is English trying to look Italian. That's what I think. Can you turn it? I'm looking at this one figure. Can you turn it? Okay, here come the three graces, right? There they are. And then the figure comes back again. And then okay. the front yeah. of the three, so three graces. Classical revival, right? Classical revival, late, eight, late 19th century, early 20th century. How tall is it? It's about 16 inches tall with the pootie. 16 inches tall all the way up to the top of the cherub. Yes. Top of the cherub. So that's called a figural finial. Put okay. that, that top in front of the camera for me, will you, honey? There you go. See that? That's it. Actually, is that figure eating grapes? Uh, it looks like there's a dog. Yes, it could be. Or there's a. Yes, it's holding something. And I, I thought this was a dog at first, but. Okay, it looks like it's leaning up against and eating grapes. That's pretty indicative of these pieces too. Value on that piece, I would say about one hundred and fifty dollars. What'd you pay? Forty bucks. That's great. Good for you. All nice right. to meet you, mate. Take good care. You too. Thank you. You know, he had a lot of things right. He had, of course, the glaze, which is that Majolica-style glaze. He thought it was Capo di Monte, thinking that it's Italian, which is that big, dramatic Italian kinds of, you know, ceramic. Um, the English, of course, will re represent the reproduce those pieces as well. That's a nice piece. Happy to have all my guests with me tonight. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. You have Mexican folk art painting on papaya, no signature, bright colored animals. So the question is, what's it worth? I have to see it. You can send a picture to the website um, right there at find values at drlaurieV.com. Go to find values and send a photo and I'll take a look. Also, dimensions, measurements are I'm going to ask you for if you're going to, of course, do these and take advantage of the Ask Dr. Lori Live. So have, you, have those um, rulers or those measuring tapes ready. Thank you, Susan, for the super sticker. I appreciate you supporting the channel. I can't do it without the support of the channel. So thanks for the super chats and the super stickers. Hi, it's Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. Hi, Dr. Lori. Hi, what's your first name? Where are you calling from? I'm Betsy, and I'm from um, Whitefish, Montana. Whitefish, Montana. That's great. Betsy, can you hold your camera horizontally for me? Sure. Sorry. Thank you, honey. No, you're fine. So, better? so white fish. Okay. So, <laughs> what have you got to show me today? I have uh, this. Let's see. In front of the camera. Find the camera. You have a cameo. This cameo. Yeah. Nice. Um, Can you back it up toward your face? Sure. There you go. And stop moving it. <laughs> there it is. Now we could all see it, right? <laughs> okay. Okay. So can I see the back of the cameo and how did sure. you acquire it? Thank you, John. How'd you acquire it? I got it at a church sale for a dollar. You got it at a church sale for a dollar? Is yes. it an inch? Is it an inch? How big is it? How long from it's top to about, bottom? It's about an inch and a quarter wide and two inches high. 14 karat gold Italian cameo, late 19th century. It's worth about 175 bucks for a Great. buck. For a buck. The church sales. And you don't even have to get there early. Everyone's like, oh, I'm going to get there very early. <laughs> Guess what? Guess what? There's so much stuff out there that's good that a lot of people don't even recognize the best stuff. Beautiful. And what did you look for? Well, first of all, how did I know it was an Italian cameo? You know it's an Italian cameo, in fact, um, by the complexity of the carving. American cameos are kind of a couple just different lines, not really complex carving. The more complex the carving. Her cameo also had, of course, a classical figure on it, always in profile. Beautiful example. I appraised one. I'll never forget it. It was like this big. It was a huge cameo like this big. And it had it had the three graces on it. It was beautiful. 
and it was Italian and it was in white gold. It was white gold as the setting and it dated to the late 1800s and that thing was worth 1200 bucks. I did it at a big event in Ohio. I'll never forget it. I'm sorry, I missed this. My wife's idea number one, right. Had my first video chat today. It was the best ever, so worth it. Thank you, Dr. Laura, you're welcome. Thank you very much for the super sticker and the super chat. Thank you for supporting the channel here tonight. I appreciate all of you supporting the channel. So thanks for the super chats and the super stickers. Um, <clears throat> but it's really interesting when there are certain objects and when you start to learn what's what. Uh, one of my videos recently, I was talking to you about how you can identify the date of a pin or a cameo from the Victorian era. If you look, of course, at the back and at the type of actual clasps on it. And that's another good tip. So lots of good tips on the videos. Don't forget to use the binge link. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. Thanks for being my guest. Yes, my name is Chrissy. I have a bas basket here. How did um, you acquire this basket, Chrissy? This Where are you coming from? Uh, from Mount Lake, Minnesota. This Minnesota. was my Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. Um, this was my mom's basket. Um, she's had it for forever. I don't know if it was her mom's before that. Okay. And I just, I thought about throwing it away. Okay. I've been using it, but it's it's in pretty tattered condition. Okay. As you can see, but I don't know if those are like banana leaves that have been wrapped around the edges or if there's any story to this thing at all. Can you move the whole basket up or can you move the basket farther away from the camera so I can see the whole basket? Okay, okay. that's good. Can, that's good. That's what I was hoping you would do. That's good. Can you show me the bottom of it? And what did your mother use this basket for? Uh, nothing Everything? really. No, so nothing. It was just in the house, right? It was just in the house and I took it to put fruit in it and it's so tattered. I thought maybe I'll throw it, but I always it's, thought it looked different. Like it's handmade. In pretty, it's in pretty rough shape. Yes, it if is. You'll notice, and, and that's from being loved, right? That's from being used right. and it's functional and objects get old just like we get old, right? Yes. I got a, a, you know, I got one right leg that I would turn in for a new right leg right today. Anyway, but that basket, in fact, is not a Native American basket. That basket is probably made in Asia and made in large numbers sometime in the 1950s or 60s. Could she have had it that okay. long? Um, I would think even probably older just because my grandparents came from Norway and they brought a lot of things with them. It's not Norwegian. Oh. It's, it's probably, it's Asian. I would say it's probably mid 1900s and value on it in that condition is probably about 40 to $60. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So yes. it's just, you know, it's not a big value, but it is something that might be sentimental to her. If she wants to hang on to it, my suggestion would be don't put anything heavy in it. It's, you know, it's run out of its useful time, right? So it's usefulness. <clears throat> it's run out of its usefulness at this point. Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Hello. Dr. Lori Live. How can I, how can I help you? What's your name? Uh, my name's Andrew. This is Anna. Hi, Andrew Hi. and Anna. How are you? Good. Sorry, I'm in bed. I just had ankle surgery. Um, you just had what surgery? A, what kind of surgery did you have? Uh, ankle. I broke are my ankle. Okay? So. What do they say? How yeah. did you break your ankle? I was biking. Oh, you're an athlete. Oh, not okay. really. I'm a composer. Not but, really. Well, I guess you're not yeah. a good athlete because you broke your ankle. So is it, yeah. it going to be okay or you just have to be six weeks in bed? What's the deal? Yeah, I can't put weight on it for six to eight weeks. They put like some metal in my leg and yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> well, metal will be good. You'll feel better. Don't do anything for six to eight weeks, right? Yeah. You could binge yeah. watch me. You could uh, yeah, six weeks. You probably could binge watch me. That's what we've been doing. <laughs> I hope, I, I, yeah, that's right. Well, you have some help. I'm sorry. I'm kidding around, but I do hope you feel better. I'm sorry that you had an accident. I'm glad that you're on the mend. Thanks. Uh, sure. What, so do you, not, what do you want to show me, hon? Not the painting behind me, but I have a piece of uh, U.S. Well, U.S. pottery uh, company. Does from, it say U.S. on the bottom? It has that stamp. I the yeah, the I stamp. See it. So I, I think it. I I saw yeah. this in the Met. You're right. You're right. Yeah. So anyway. well, some pieces in the museum. Let's talk a little bit about that particular piece. Is about twelve inches tall. Yeah. And it's got a lid on it that looks to be a, a base metal or a gray metal, right? Yeah. Okay. 
So you've seen this piece in, in the Met. Museum pieces aren't always very high value. Museum pieces, speaking as a museum curator and director for a long time, museum pieces are to actually show, of course, the idea of, of what is possible, right? And how it relates to culture or the production of a particular type of piece. So okay. this particular piece, where did you purchase it or was it handed down? Uh, actually, we got it in a storage unit that we had gotten. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. So you put, <laughs> like, put it on a storage unit and got all kinds of stuff? Yeah, there was like, it was basically a whole antique shop. So it's just filled with different pottery. And that's why we we're thinking of doing like the the mailing service with you soon, but like the <laughs> unlimited one. Okay, but anyway. Well, whenever, whenever you feel up to it, of course, any of my services yeah. are always offered. And the video chats might be the way to go, or maybe you want the priority ask Dr. Lori service, whatever you want to do. It's not so much about services, it's about that piece. That particular piece is a nice piece, which of course dates into the 19th century and value on it about $400. So hopefully cool. you're going to keep it until you can list it on the right source, right? You want to list it in the right place. Because what I do is I evaluate the whole market. I don't say, oh, only go to this particular website, only go to that particular website. Like a lot of people do, they're always promoting the same websites for you to list things on because, of course, they have a relationship with that particular website. That's between them and the website that they're trying to promote. I'm trying to make sure you succeed and get these pieces sold for top dollar. Thanks so much, and we all hope you're feeling better really soon. <laughs> My next guest is... Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. Can you turn your yeah, camera so it's horizontal, please? And can you tell me your first name and where are you calling from? I'm Kevin. I'm from uh, Reading, PA. Hi, Kevin. Can you please hold your camera horizontal? Yeah, it is, it is horizontal. I think I have it locked up. You have it locked up? <laughs> well, there you go. That better? Okay. okay. Yeah, I have a piece I got from um, uh, a church sale. It one object. A, Show me one object. Okay. How did you? So you got it from a church sale? Yes. It makes you smile. That's a cool piece. <laughs> it is. It's different. Okay. And is there a mark on the bottom of it? Yeah. It's. Can you uh, tell me what it says? Because you're not getting it on the camera. It's the uh, Czechoslovakia F. Ephenial. Okay. Chris, thank you for your super sticker. I appreciate it. Those of you, of course, who are doing the videos with me and are my guests, I appreciate you supporting the channel as well. That particular piece is a piece that dates into the latter part of the 20th century. And do you only have that one piece or did you get the whole set? I, I only have the one piece. I know there's I think two other sizes. This one's about seven inches. Yeah, two other sizes. That one's worth $75. They're very rare and they're quite desirable. So looking at these figural pieces, nice piece, later part of the 20th century. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice to see you. So lots of pieces and lots of fun. That particular piece I like because I like the contrast of the colors. I also like, again, the ceramic, um, the, basically the way in which the ceramic is formed. So we see a lot of ceramics and a lot of the ceramics, of course, mass produced in large numbers, not all that valuable. But today, because the market has become so saturated with, again, low quality ceramics, the high quality ceramics like that piece go up in value pretty fast. So that's what you want to look for. And again, if he, if he had the opportunity to buy all three, even if you didn't need all three or want all three, if you have the opportunity to do that, buy them all. Thank you, Chris, for the super sticker. I appreciate that as well. I'm Dr. Lori, the PhD Antiques Appraiser. I'm taking guests and their questions to evaluate pieces for them. This is Ask Dr. Lori live. Thanks for being with me. Hi. Hi, I'm Brandon. Hi, Brandon. How are you? Good. I'm 18 and I'm a young reseller. I've been reselling jewelry and antique and old stuff since I was about 10 years old. Okay. Um, I've got this piece Where right Where are you here. in the country? Where are you in the country? I'm in the Midwest in Iowa. Okay. So you've got this piece. Yep, I've got this piece. It is 950 silver and it's got a Mexican mark. I'm pretty sure it's lapis, but it also has a matching bracelet with it too. Right there. Okay. So where do you typically sell your stuff? Anywhere online or do you have a specific site that you like to sell on? 
I uh, sell on Macari and Etsy with my mom because we okay. share the account. And I also have my own online store that I promote through YouTube. Okay. So a couple of different questions. Um, first of all, lapis lazuli, of course, that nice blue form that you're going to see, that nice blue stone. You said it's 950 parts per 1,000 mm -hmm. sterling silver. So it's better than sterling because it's more than 92.5%. It's 95%. Sterling silver. It's marked Mexico, right? And we know that some of yeah. you guys are on here to sort of show your wares, you know, to, to talk to all of the viewers. But basically, that particular piece would be anywhere between $300 and $350. I think you could get a little bit more than that, but might, maybe not in this market today. I'd add another $100, $125 for the bracelet. So you might be right around $500 for these those two pieces. I would get it off a site like Mercari personally. I'd like to see you in an upper echelon site where you have higher end jewelry. But I don't mm -hmm. want you to make this mistake. You got a whole, hypothetically speaking, because I don't know your particular site. So you have a whole you know, Etsy store and it's filled with low end costume jewelry that you're trying to sell for 20 or $30. And you put this, this set up for 500 and everybody goes, wait a minute, doesn't make, meet with this store. It's kind of like if you went into, you know, a very, very low end dollar store kind of place and you wanted to get something really high end, not going to really work. Or yeah. you're going to put something very high end in the dollar store and see if it's going to sell. You got the wrong clientele. So let's make sure that you're getting that to the right place. Of course, I help buyers and I help sellers and it was nice to help you. Take care. Thank you. You too. Sure. You're welcome. So that's basically what we're looking at with these kinds of pieces. It's a lot of tips that I give you, particularly on the newsletter, which is at drlaurieV.com. And I hope you will subscribe. It's easy to subscribe. Um, and that's at drlaurieV.com. And of course, here on the channel, where I give you all different types of tips, but a lot of selling tips at my newsletter, um, through my newsletter, as well as my blog, which is on the website. So I hope you'll read it. Hi, Megan. I have an Edward Erkinson mermaid stamped with an S and crown. Similar, I have a Royal Copenhagen mark different from mine. You the best. <laughs> well, you the best too, Megan. Um, I, of course, can talk with you a little bit about that um, Erickson mermaid stamp. There's a couple of different things that are happening there. So a picture of your piece, a picture of the marks, the stamps. And then always remember that, you know, when you have these different pieces, what happens if you buy a lot of them together? Oftentimes you start to think that they all were always together and that's not always the case. But I'll take a good look to see what you've got and help you out with that. Don't forget, I'm always going to need clear photos. Kim, thank you very much for the super sticker. Um, thank you, Sandra, for the super sticker. And I want to thank everybody for the super sticker and the super chats. I don't want to miss any of you, and I appreciate it very much because it helps the channel, and it helps me to continue to help you. Um, <clears throat> I'm happy to do everything I can do and that I do, and I'll do it as long as you guys will support me. So when folks are rude to me, I want to hear it in the comments that you don't like it. <laughs> anyway, hi, I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Hi, Dr. Lori. Hi. I'm nice to see you. Where are you from and what's your first name? I'm in Montana. My name is Stacy. Hi, Stacy. I have some earrings that I got there. Oh, hold on. I got to get it up there. Can you hold the camera horizontally, please? There mm -hmm. you go. And then let's see what we can see I'm about those here. earrings. How did you acquire those earrings? They were... um. In my dad's house, he passed away. Okay. So and they're like right there. Are they ceramic? Are they cold to the touch? Yes. Okay. So a couple of things that those are. Typically, you'll see ceramic earrings. They have a post, right? And then the mm -hmm. ceramic. So the actual rose or the flower is literally produced around that piece. It kind of sits down on this little, looks kind of like a Black. little bowl, and then the post comes out, and then the earring is okay. here. Those are usually made in either France or the United States. They're usually made in the early part of the 1960s to the early part of the 1970s, which is when they were popular. You have the pair, and they're both about the same color pink? Yes, okay. and a little purple pair. Okay, well, let's do the one pair first. Great. So the pink pair, which is the flower, ceramic, again, in that time period, 60s to the 70s, value on it about $35 for the pair. Okay. Thank you very then, much. Thank so, you. You're welcome, sweetheart. So when you're looking at these types of pieces, I want you to look at a couple of things when it comes to uh, earrings like that. 
first of all, look at the material on the post. So the post might be um, a surgical steel, right? The post, the post that goes into your ear, right? That goes into your pierced ear might be surgical steel. It could be sterling silver. It also could be, of course, 14 karat gold. Normally, if you have a ceramic piece like she had, it's not going to usually be 14 karat gold. That post is usually going to be surgical steel, relatively inexpensive. So low materials and low quality materials, low value. That's why I always say, look for quality, look for quality, know the material. That's why I try to teach you all of that. Mary, thank you very much. What would be high-end sites? Etsy, Ruby Lane, and, well, you know, there are a lot of high-end sites. So what I mean is he was saying that he uses uh, Mercari. There's nothing wrong with Mercari, uh, nothing wrong with any of these other sites he may feel comfortable with, but I just want to make sure that if you are um, basically putting an inventory out on like an Etsy store, that you don't put all these low price pieces, then you put a high price piece because your clientele is going to be confused by that. If you're going to market it, I want you to have a correct identification and I want you to market it for the right site. So again, there are certain sites that in fact charge a little bit more and even over retail value. It's where a lot of my clients will basically say, wow, Dr. Lori, you're actually educating me on to where to sell it to. So for certain pieces, Ruby Lane is a high-end site, but for certain pieces, it's not. You know, jewelry pieces like costume jewelry pieces, if you have a high-end Etsy store, Etsy could be a high-end site. eBay, oftentimes, as long as you are marketing it properly. And don't use these sites and comparing your pieces to other pieces on those sites as the appraised value because a lot of these folks are putting things up way too low. They get it for nothing. They just go, I don't care. Here's an example. I spoke with a woman today who is selling pieces on her social media channels. Very nice, smart person, great. So she's making money and she's doing fine. She says, I buy things for under $5 and all I want to do is triple my money. So I'm buying it for under five or let's say I bought, she bought, buys it at five. She goes, and I only asked $15. Okay, you're, may, you're tripling your money. That's great. You're getting $15. But you may be getting $15 for a piece that's worth $250. Isn't it better to get the appraisal and know that it's worth $250 before you only settle for $15? Yeah, it's great that you, that you bought it for five bucks but why settle for 15 when it's worth 250? That's not going to be every piece is going to be worth that. But in fact, enough pieces, in fact, might be worth that, that you need to get the appraisal. And she said, I realized that that's what I was doing. And that's why I booked an hour video call actually with you today, Dr. Lori. She made a lot of money doing her, I want to triple my money idea. But then she thought, you know what, I'm going to do a little bit better. And she stepped up her game. That's what I'm trying to teach all of you. How do you step up your game? And it's information because all of you are smart and all of you know what you're doing. I want to make it better for you. I want to share my years and years in major museums, my years and years in university teaching and my background and education with all of you. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. Thanks for being with me. Who's my guest? Hi, it's Enrique from Miami. Hi, Enrique. How are you? Good. How are you? I got I'm this. I'm fine. Thanks. I got this 20 by 24 airbrush oil on canvas. It's from the 80s or 90s. The artist's name is Diana Martin. And this is the piece. Uh, she does Southwestern stuff and it's hand signed and it's stamped on the back. Mm. Okay. Eh. No. Doesn't do much for me. What do you think? I don't you know. like it? I was intrigued by the stamp. Uh, Let's see the stamp. Show me the stamp. It's a little, you can barely see it, but it's right here. Oh, I see it. You can see it. So she's selling it through a gallery. Can I see the signature too? Yes. You know why I went like, eh, because, you know, you see so many of the same type of thing, you know, and to me, there's not a whole lot put into this. And I have a lot of respect for artists and I think artwork is difficult. Yeah. Diana Martin. That's her signature. That's right. Okay. So authentic a work of art. It's the late 80s, early 90s. Okay. So you're yes. right there in the right time period. It's around the time of like Saved by the Bell, <laughs> if you're looking at TV, right? So it's that That's time right. period. Or those little kids, what were their names? The the Full House kids, those little kids, the Tanners, <laughs> that time yes. period, late 80s, early 90s. How do you tell? You can tell by the frame. You can tell by the style. You can tell by the type. Remember the ties used to look like that? Anyway, I digress. Diana Martin pieces are relatively well-known. 
It's a nice piece. I don't think it's going to break any, you know, art history records. You know, it's not like a great groundbreaking piece, but it's fine. I would say value on the piece is probably anywhere between two seventy five and three hundred and fifty dollars in okay. that frame. How much did you pay for it? Eight bucks. Eight bucks is good. I wish I could tell you it's worth eight hundred, but eight bucks is not bad for a three fifty painting. Thank you. Thank you, Enrique. Bye. So here's the situation with this. People start to look at those types of paintings and they think, well, okay, she's a good artist and relatively well known, but it starts to look like pieces that a lot of artists are producing. And when works of art start to look like the works of other artists, the problem becomes that people don't recognize that she's better than the others. So that's what you think. So if I were Enrique, I'd put a value, I'd think about the retail value at 350. I might put it up a little bit higher and have some room to negotiate down to what the retail value is, which is based on actual sales records. A, a pink frame should scream to all of you, it's the late 80s. <laughs> um, I'm, asked, I'm Dr. Lori, this is Ask Dr. Lori Live. Who's my next guest? <gasps> oh, it's you, it's me. Oh, <laughs> Hi, Dr. Lori. Hi, honey, take a deep breath. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Okay. It's nice to see you, where are you? Are you somewhere where there are many ducks, judging from your background? That That is a, uh, it's been on my wall for years. I'm in Dallas, Texas. I'm in my oh. house. That I is a, you. is a gate. It's made out of wood. It's very, very heavy. Oh, it's like a gate that you would open and go through. Yes. That it, I think it was from new England at one time. It feels like new England to me. I have to say it doesn't feel like Dallas. What's your first name? Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Dr. Lori. <laughs> so, Anyway, I have to get calm because I'm so excited to see you. Well, it's nice to see you. Thank you very much for supporting the channel and for being here. You're welcome. I can have, I would love for you to appraise that that gate if you can, if you can even tell what it is because I can't get the camera on it very well. Okay. So we have a gate, a door gate. Well, thank you. Somebody just got the camera on it better. That was better. So it's wood and then the picture, I'm going to call it a duck. Maybe it's a goose. I don't know. But the, the my mom so is it carved out, Kathy? Is it car? Is the is the goose actually carved out? Yes. Okay. No, it's painted and painted can, onto the board of the gate. Yeah, this is the wood of the gate. Tell her how yep. you got. And yep. you can see down here, it's got these little feet. I see them. Yep. The I see them. And yep. then at the top, it's got. Uh, yep. I don't know what you call so that? The, the curved <laughs> arches. I see them. How did you acquire it? How long have you owned it? I acquired it from my mother. Okay. She she loved antiques, so did my grandmothers. And uh, I've had it for over 40 years. She walked into a restaurant. Yeah, well, she got it at a cafe in Texas. And um, it was hanging on the wall. When she, she passed away, she let me, I, she said, what do you love? And I said, I love that goose. Honey, it was sitting on the, it was hanging on a wall. She walked in and loved it and offered to buy from the owner. Yeah. My mom and her friend were in a cafe in Texas years and years ago. And my mom loves art. She saw it on the wall in the cafe. She said, how much will you, how much do you want for that goose? I don't know what they said. It was not, it was under a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And so my mom bought it and we had it hanging in our house. And I was a kid. I absolutely love it because the goose has a fighting eye. Move the lamp. So a couple of things about your piece. First of all, I th it, your piece is not signed, correct? Yes, it is. Okay. Down here, it says N. Ramsey. I think R.A. You're breaking the house over there, Kathy. <laughs> You're Things are house. falling and crashing and all of a sudden it says R. Ramsey on it. It has N. Ramsey, I believe. N. Ramsey, I apologize. I think that that particular piece was at a gate of a house of an artist. And I think the artist probably lived where the gate was. I don't think that this was um, Ramsey making gates that were actually painted in this way. I think this is a one of a kind. And I think this particular piece probably dates to the early decades of the 20th century, probably between 1920 and about 1940. And I would put $250 on it. I think it's gorgeous as a piece of wall art the way you have it displayed, as opposed to just sort of leaning up on the floor or somewhere else. 
It's really quite beautiful. And it's nice that you're paying homage to your mom. Thank you, Kathy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Have a great day. You too. So a couple of things like that. Oftentimes when you see those types of pieces, those types of pieces were made for a particular um, artist's home. Possibly the studio had that gate, that kind of thing. I think that's pretty typical. It does look reminiscent of some New England gates, which were typically um, painted like that, usually before World War II. You can tell that by the type of, pe type of pigment that is used and also the application. That nice representational format is what you're looking for, you know, as opposed to the later 20th century pieces like that, which might be ah, maybe more abstract or non-objective, kind of like Enrique's piece, kind of a non-objective or no object kind of feel. That one was really representational. Most people might call it even realistic. That was a nice one. Something interesting and new. So... We see a lot of different types of objects here, and I appraise all different ones. Again, I don't know what's coming. Um, I don't know what, none of these pieces are vetted, and I don't know who's gonna be my guest. I appreciate, of course, all of you, and thanks to the guests for supporting the channel with super stickers and super chats. Thanks to all of you. Hi, expert answers for you. I'm Dr. Lori, what's your name? Hi, Dr. Lori, my name is Shandice. Hi, Shandice, can you hold your camera horizontally for me, please? Oh. Maybe I have it the wrong way. Is that any better? Well, it's not that it's the wrong way. We're just trying to get you so you fill up the screen. That's all. Okay, well. Okay, is this better? Let is it horizontal? I am horizontal. Okay, so it's not clicking for you. Okay, I'm so sorry. It's not rotating That's right. for me. That's okay. I'm sorry about that. So. All right. Well, we might be able to get back to her if she can get her technical difficulties ironed out. I'm sure she will. I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live, and I'm taking guests. Hi, this is Dr. Lori. How are you? Hi, Dr. Lori. Hi, Hi honey. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Hey, I just found you. I, 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 I am a reseller, and I start, I'm selling on eBay again, and, and I've been looking now. I research, and I do lots, and I found you. Did the crazy lamp lady. I don't know if you've heard of her, but anyway, yeah. So you found me and it's helpful, right? I thank you, Sandra, for appreciating my hard work. I love Pittsburgh too. You know I love Pittsburgh. So what's your first name, sweetheart? I'm Nancy. Nancy, nice to see you. I'm so glad that you found me. And of course, I hope you'll share the channel. I hope all of you will share the channel. Been sharing it. Been sharing it. Yeah. Thank you so much. What can I talk with you about tonight? Hey, I got a couple things, but I found, at, or I got it at an estate sale, at an auction, about 10 years ago. You got it from an estate sale 10 years ago? Yeah. Okay. And I haven't been looking for it ever since, but... <clears throat> so how, wait, so you're looking for it, like, online? You're Google searching, trying to find it? Yeah, and I've looked in uh, glass books, but my sister's a librarian, so I... Can you, can you hold it up to the camera, please? So you're looking in glass books because someone's a librarian, so they've been looking as well, and you can't find it. Yeah, I can't. All find right. It. And the bottom, the bottom has in cursive. It's written in cursive, Shangri La. Oh, it says Shangri La on the bottom. Yeah, it's written in cursive. Yeah, yeah. And then so, it, both sides has a, both sides have a like a, I don't know if it's Shangri La. I don't, if it's a, it's a village of some time, but each side has a picture. Each side has an image, in fact, of a um, of a scene, basically a landscape with particular buildings. Shangri-La, relatively well known. Value on that piece about seventy dollars. That's nice. Oh. Yeah, very good. Nice to meet you. Thanks so much. So a lot of different things that we like to look at. We like to look at different objects. And when you had an object a long time and you can't figure it out, a lot of people say, okay, I've been looking for this and searching all the time. I want to stop all of this searching for you. I want to cut down on your searching time because you're just going through and you're looking at pictures, looking at pictures, looking at pictures. And a lot of the time you might get to that site you might get to, oh, look, somebody put up a picture that looks kind of like mine. And it's nothing like yours. So I want to make sure that you're getting the right information. Peter, love, 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 love all these people. So it's nice that you are enjoying this. Waltzing with crystals. Uh, go to Dr. L's log so I can learn how to be a guest. Pretty sure all of tonight's guests were selected before the show. That's not true, Waltzing. You're absolutely wrong. Nobody is selected before tonight's show. Everybody gets on tonight. 
So I don't have time to be re pre selecting folks. We go, I don't know who's coming, nothing's vetted. So don't make assumptions. This is what I mean when you're going to look. You're going to people who have the wrong information and believing that they're accurate. That's not right. So I want you to make sure that you're getting the right information about what we do here as well as what we do in other places too. So if you're finding me from other channels, which I'm sure you are, and there are a lot of other channels, of course, who are also in fact following me and then giving my information to you. So I wanna make sure you're getting my information right from the source. That's right here. So good to be with all of you. I want to thank all of you who are my guests and all of you who supported the channel with super chats and super stickers. Thanks so much for being here. I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. I'll see you next time.